السلام علیکم وعلیکم السلام سر وعلیکم السلام سر یس وی ار گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ این ادر ٹاپک بیسیکلی دس از مارکسزم ان مارکس مارکسزم کرٹیسزم we already discuss about marxism or well, it is based on the social and economic theories of karl marx and friedrich engels uh, marxism generally focuses on the clash between the dominant and the uh, repressed class uh, basically according to uh, this the- theory uh, there are two classes a uh, middle class and uh, lower class and working class the people who own uh, factories uh, the people who own resources and and the people who uh, work for them uh, marx uh, believes that there is a conflict between capitalist and uh, working class a- as you know that how you understand it uh, suppose there is always uh, conflict between factory workers and factory owners the working class will overthrow the capitalist middle class uh, now according to his uh, concept according to his opinion according to the opinion of marx meanwhile the middle class exploit the working class so the time comes the times comes uh, the working class will overthrow the capitalist middle class uh, meanwhile but uh, you, you see that in in this process now the middle class basically exploit the working class uh, now uh, this is a marxism and what, what is marxist uh, marxist uh, criticism now literature from so- sociological point of view uh, a sociological approach to literature as the product of historical forces that can be analyzed by looking at the material condition it was formed as you as you know that uh, there are different uh, uh, you, you see that the novels there are different poems in which we see that uh, whether uh, the, these these novels basically uh, these work of an art uh, emphasize the economic condition or material conditions as we know that dolls house uh, depicts the uh, poor class uh, and uh, it also depicts the aristocratic class and uh, uh, as you have read huckle very fin and then there is a, a depiction of uh, the boy from lower class and in david uh, copperfield of charles dickens you you can uh, uh, say that uh, uh copperfield basically he belongs to poor class and and then you see that he works very hard and the difficulties uh, he has been facing and uh, there is an, another novel this animal farm uh, in in that uh, george orwell in in which uh, uh, you see there is a, a depiction of uh, communism uh, again you see that uh, communism is based on the philosophy of marxism uh, basically uh, we are going to to start uh, the next uh, philosopher but uh, you see that in your uh, topics it is uh, termed as marxism or marxist uh, criticism so we are going to start it but to some extent uh, you must be aware of what is marxism and what what is marxism criticism so we are going to start uh, uh, george wilhelm frederick hegel uh, 1770 uh, he, he was born in germany uh, stuttgart germany and died in 1831 berlin germany uh, basically his uh, lectures on fine arts uh, you are read, uh, you, you are going to study his lectures on fine arts basically the german philosopher and he has written many books and uh, uh, his lectures on fine arts uh, uh, basically is a big book 
but I have tried at my level best to contain uh, it in, in my lecture, the main points, just I have focused on main points, the, what he is trying to uh, say uh, in these lectures. Uh, so he was an early 19th uh, uh, century uh, German philosopher who has a great influence on Western philosophy. So he has got uh, great importance. Uh, later on, uh, you, uh, you can say that his uh, uh, philosophy uh, has a great influence on Western philosophy. Hegel was a lover and a student of science. Uh, basically, uh, he, he, he was a lover and, and a student of science. He claims that, now what he's saying about an art, now he's saying that art expresses the particular culture as well as that individual, or individual artists and general spirit. Uh, Hegel is of the opinion that uh, art has got superiority. Uh, because he loves romantic art very much. As you know that when uh, uh, we read uh, the odes of Keats, we, we come to know that uh, Keats basically, especially in Ode to Grisha, um, uh, he uh, believes that art is far more superior than uh, nature. Uh, so art has got much importance. So uh, Hegel basically, he... Uh, loves romantic art very much and he uh, terms romantic art as an absolute type of art because it has got large platform to express itself. So according to Hegel, there is a process of art and Hegel claimed that history is moving to its uh, uh, climax. So you see that uh, there is a uh, progress in uh, art and the progress in history and history moving into its climate. Uh, he considers beauty of an art is to be higher than nature. Uh, so uh, as I have told you the example of uh, uh, Keats uh, is he in Ode to Grishan and he is saying that uh, uh, because he is very much uh, inspired by uh, Hellenic art, Greek art, and he thinks that art basically has got perfection and art is permanent. In, in the same way, because Keats uh, likes medieval art and uh, Hegel basically, he is also uh, just uh, uh, thinks that medieval art uh, is romantic art and it has got perfection in it. So it shows, uh, uh, it shows he considered art higher than nature and phenomenon. So for him, art has got permanence and art has got, uh, uh, you see that too much to express itself. So he speaks in the favor of an art. Yes, this is a, a second slide. <coughs> yes, Mustaq. <coughs> I don't know, uh, there is an interruption. Uh, so, so he is uh, talking about, because his lectures uh, are pretty much on uh, the uh, art, so, so there, there's a discussion about uh, him. Uh, so uh, he's talking about art and he's talking about fine arts. At the same time, he's talking about beauty as well. So experience of beauty is saying that experience of beauty in expression of the spirit. So spirit is the true self that knows how to uh, grasp everything. So uh, there must be, uh, if, if you like, if you would like to, uh, to enjoy beauty, you must have a spirit. Otherwise uh, you can't enjoy it and you can't express beauty. So a spirit is the true self that knows how to grasp everything. Uh, so uh, it is uh, because of the spirit that you can uh, express self and you can understand, you can gr grasp everything, what is happening all around you and what is happening in your environment. The spirit not mind is called the self-conscious intellect. So you have, if you have got uh, uh, intellect now, uh, uh, according to Hegel, Spirit has uh, 
uh, God everything. So with the help of a spirit, you know yourself. There is a subjectivity, there is a self-conscious, there is intellect. So spirit basically can express the beauty, can express beauty and can express art as well. So spirit is according to, spirit is everything. The self-consciousness comes into being and continues to evolve from dialectical uh, understanding of the mind, uh, spirit, the mind and object. Uh, 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 he, uh, Hegel, uh, Hegel, basically, uh, he is, uh, uh, is talking about self-consciousness, how to bring self-consciousness. Now, self-consciousness can be uh, brought through logical understanding of things, uh, logical thinking, and logical discussion. And But you, you, you can say that uh, uh, there are two things. One is self another one outside. Now, it means that we, uh, we know the self-knowledge, we come to know about ourselves, and there is a subjectivity, but it means that whatever outside, uh, first one is inside, and that is outside. So we basically see what is there in outside, and that outside basically reflects uh, 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 whatever we have. So there is a great connection between inner self and outer self. So you can say that if you have got inner self only and there is no outer self and there is no outside, and so it means that you can't grasp grasping. Beauty is uh, uh, lies in you, but how you uh, just uh, grasp that, how you understand that by looking at different beautiful things. And you basically, when you have got inner self, you have got a spirit. So because of that, you realize certain things. Because of that, you express beauty. And because of you uh, have understand uh, certain things. Uh, Hegel, basically, he is of the opinion that if one idea is there, so uh, it, its opposite should be there. Now, it means that if uh, one person tells something, so another person refuted another person tells another thing means that you see that he is opposing that so when both these person then when they agree when they compromise so you see that there is a synthesis of thing so there is a uniqueness of thing that that is a distinguished thing so according to him there should be logical there should be dialectical there should be logical discussion of something and then if one idea is there if one idea is there, so there should be in another idea, there should be opposite of that because there should be contradiction because he believes in contradiction. And now he says that if you want to understand things, so there must be another idea, there must be opposite up to that. So a spirit develop, develop its own awareness and clarity while living in nature. So uh, man must have uh, clarity man must have self awareness and because of his uh, uh, spirit because of uh, that clarity there is self awareness so uh, with the help of uh, understanding logical understanding of things with the help of your spirit with the help of development you uh, one day you will realize there must there is a self awareness you can say there is a clarity about uh, certain thing so a spirit appears in human consciousness through its successive stages of clarity, clarity, and reaches the stage of absolute knowledge. Uh, Hegel believes in absolute knowledge. Uh, absolute knowledge where you know many things. So absolute knowledge is a perfection you, you, you have got. So something uh, you have got, uh, and uh, because absolute knowledge is uh, equal to is equal to perfect truths, so wherein it becomes absolute aware of itself. So it means that you come to know about things. Uh, 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 there is a development, and then there are certain stages. You cover uh, certain stages, and you come to know about things. So there, you 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 can say that art, beauty. 
logical discussion and then all these things, all these stages, uh, you cross all these stages and then you finally, you come to self-consciousness and self-awareness. And that is the uh, purpose of an art when, when you understand certain things, when you understand beauty. And yes, there is absolute knowledge. And uh, with, with the help of art, with the help of beauty, with the help of all these things, uh, basically logical understanding of the things outside objects, uh, you you come to know you come to know many things and then you reach to the absolute uh, knowledge and gaining absolute knowledge is uh, very important uh, according to Hegel. Now we come to uh, another point. There are three stages of development of mind according to Hegel. There are three stages of development of mind. A spirit appears in human consciousness through its successive stages of clarity until it reaches the stage of absolute truth, wherein it becomes absolute aware of. Now, this is very important. So, uh, as you know, that a spirit of a person is very important and it uh, uh, helps you to achieve human consciousness, but there are certain stages. So, with the help of uh, uh, consciousness, uh, uh, finally, you achieve clarity, and when you achieve clarity about uh, things in the world, so you have got absolute truth. So, uh, absolute truth. When when you have got absolute truth, so you are aware of uh, many things in the world. So, आपको जो है आपके अंदर जो है realization आ जाती है आपके अंदर जो है absolute knowledge आपके अंदर आ जाता है. Freedom is the idea or the goal of the soul. The more the soul becomes aware, the more it becomes free from world material. Now, you, you can say that uh, from, uh, you, from uh, material world, you are moving to, you are crossing the stage, you are moving to spiritual. So from body uh, to soul, they, this is a journey and, and the certain stages. So when you realize certain things, when you have got clarity of mind, when you have got absolute truth, when you understand many things, when there is, uh, there, are, uh, there is a self-awareness or self-consciousness, it means that you have uh, realized your purpose and you your soul basically has realized uh, whatever uh, it uh, wants to achieve. So three stages of development of mind, the first in the form of self-relation. Or the subjective mind, each individual mind develop at its grasp in the world, uh, uh, grasp the world. Uh, basically, uh, uh, there's a subjective mind. Uh, we have got subjective mind. So one person has got subjective mind, and the basically subjective mind is trying to develop itself, trying to understand the world. So there's a subjective mind, and then the the the, the second one. The relation of reality that there is another mind this is called mind in the world now this this, this is called collective mind now when there is a uh, committee there is a body when there is a collective effort towards solution of any problem when there is a collective effort this is called collective mind when people come to uh, they, they have formed a, a team, you can say that, and then they move in order to achieve certain tasks, certain things. So it means collectively. So one object is there, one goal is there, and uh, you see that there is a, a combination, amalgam of uh, two or three minds. This is called uh, collective. As you know that there is a self-consciousness, and then there is a collective consciousness. Collective consciousness in sense, the sense that when the people of society come at this stage and they realize certain things and they, they want to achieve something. Mind produces itself while living within the mind. It is called objective mind. As you see that the collective consciousness is called objective mind. And uh, so the third one, mind in its absolute truth, Absolute truth, all subjective and objective minds are covered by history are being developed. Now you see that the third stage uh, uh, is, is, you can say that when uh, uh, the, the uh, 
because this is a stage, subjective mind is a stage. When you realize certain things, when you look at the uh, certain thing, you, you have got personal obser observation, you have got personal idea, but your idea can be mixed up with other minds and you see that there is a collective effort and there is a collective, uh, you, you see that approach uh, and, and then you different minds uh, uh, just meet up. And again, you see that uh, the third uh, thing is that they realize the absolute truth. So ob objective uh, uh, is achieved. You see, this is, this is called objective mind. This is a third stage according to uh, Hegel. Uh, so uh, there's the, the a concept of beauty. Now, what is the concept of beauty according to Hegel? Uh, Hegel says a true beauty is a direct sensuous expression of the freedom of beauty. As, as we know that he uh, basically is inspired by romantic art. He's inspired by romanticism. He's inspired by medievalism or medieval art. So you, therefore, you, you can say that romantic poets, basically, they are sensuous. They have got sensuous expression of, they, they have got sensuous enjoyment of certain things. So he, 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 in the same manner, he's trying to say that true, true, uh, true beauty is the direct sensuous expression of the freedom of uh, beauty. True beauty is created by the spirit itself for the spirit, and it is a, a spirit and so it is found in the work of an art for the freedom of his brain. So you, you can say that if you have got a spirit, you can create a, a true beauty. And for whom you are creating true, true beauty. So it means you are creating for an spirit and, and a spirit. And then you see that how uh, the work of an art of freedom of a spirit, basically you create true beauty when you have got lot of freedom when you have got freedom and you create a true beauty in the sense that uh, there are three forms of art again he when he come to uh, he, he comes to uh, the, the point there are three forms of art symbolic classical and romantic uh, you see that art so in these uh, all these lectures basically he is uh, talking about art he is talking about beauty he is talking about spirit he is talking about all these things so uh, he defines symbolic uh, art in the first place now he is saying that uh, symbolic art is struggling for appropriate form so uh, symbolic art is not perfect art it is not perfect truth it is not absolute truth but it, you see that uh, it is struggling, it is trying to achieve its appropriate form. It is imperfect, it has got certain drawbacks uh, uh, because it is not expressed in sensuous form. Uh, as you know that uh, uh, he comes to the point where he thinks that and he believes that, rather he believes that romantic art is a sensuous form of an art and it has got absolute truth. And uh, you, therefore you see that he calls it uh, uh, he speaks in the favor of romantic art. So, for example, religious art of India and Egypt. So, symbolic art, as you know, that uh, uh, religious art of India, where uh, gods, bhagwans, and you see that all these uh, uh, things they they have created, and uh, they have the concept, they have the image, and Egypt basically uh, the the religious art and of Egypt basically where pyramids are there as, as you can say this is the these are the examples of uh, symbolic art so what is there in the symbolic art meaning and shape remains abstract and defective so he is of the opinion that uh, meaning and shape uh, uh, remain abstract and defective there are certain defects in such art in uh, the religious art of india and egypt the symbolic art Symbolic art as sublime, yes, it is a good and it is sublime. Its failure is due to inadequacy of it, artistic means. So you, you see that it is an imperfect art, it has got uh, uh, drawbacks and it is uh, inadequate. So it is not enough, it is not sufficient. So, so he includes architecture is an uh, example of symbolic art. So 
this is an example of symb symbolic art, but he's saying that it is struggling, it is trying to get its appropriate form. There is no appropriate form as such, and it has got certain drawbacks. Uh, then he comes to classical art. As you know that you are aware of classical art, it is an art of ancient Greece. Uh, to some extent, uh, it is far better than symbolic art. So it is an art of ancient Greece. It co overcomes the art of symbolic art. To some extent, uh, it is more unified. Uh, it is uh, unique, more unique than symbolic art. Uh, as you know that what is there in symbolic art. So uh, Greek art, basically Hellenic art, uh, you, you you can say that, that he is he is trying to say that he uh, this is uh, unified this is modified and to some extent far better than symbolic art. It is free. Why it is uh, good? Why why it is far better than symbolic art? It is free in educate em embodiment of an idea. Idea is in a complete harmony. Again, he is trying to. Uh, tell us the characteristics of uh, uh, classical art and he is trying to explain that. His status is expressed adequately. His spirit is deter determined, determined as human, not absolute eternal. It is only defect in classical art. Now, this is this is the only defect he's trying to say that his spirit is determined as human, not absolute eternal. Now, he is trying to say that classical art, again, is not absolute. It's not eternal, it is not perfect, but to some extent we can say, or to great extent we can say, uh, it is far better than symbolic art. So, so, so he is trying to say that uh, classical art, uh, Hellenic art, uh, ancient art is basically far better than the art of India and uh, the religious uh, uh, India and Egypt. So uh, uh, here, th this is an example of uh, classical art. The scripture, basically, as you know, that there are there are certain scriptures. Uh, scripture, basically, example of classical art, and in symbolic art, you can say architecture is uh, uh, example of symbolic art. So he comes to uh, the third uh, thing that is. Uh, 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 romantic art. So what he's trying to say, romantic art is an absolute idea. So he speaks in the favor of romantic art. He appreciates romantic art. So he is saying that romantic art, uh, romantic art has got absolute idea. It, it is based on absolute idea. And uh, it is uh, uh, perfect. It, it has got... Uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you see that expression, and it is far better than symbolic art, it is far better than uh, uh, <clears throat> classical art. It cannot be adequately expressed, it has too much to express. Uh, he is saying that there is a lot of room in romantic art, so uh, uh, it cannot be sufficiently expressed, because it has got uh, uh, a lot of room and it has got uh, uh, much horizon. So uh, there is a lot to be expressed, but it is not it's still expressing. Romantic is, what is romantic art? So romantic art is asso associated with medieval Christianity and romantics of Hegel's day. Uh, so so a, a, as, we, uh, as we know that, uh, 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 medievalism and medieval Christianity, uh, the, the art of medieval Christianity, because uh, uh, he is trying to say that uh, uh, this art basically is romantic art and it has got perfection and it is the absolute one. So he, he is giving us example of romantic art, uh, paintings, music, poetry. Now, what he is saying about painting? Paintings basically uh, captures expression and conveys subjective art. Uh, so, uh, so he has uh, uh, he has included paintings, uh, music, poetry in romantic art. 
as we know that uh, in painting through painting uh, we can uh, express ourselves uh, uh, you, you see that this is a type of subjective art as we know that romantic art uh, emphasizes stresses on subjectivity uh, stresses on imagination stresses on sensuousness uh, stresses on enjoyment and there is uh, uh, you see that it has got much scope it has got broader scope it has got larger scope so he has included paintings in it uh, again he comes to the second point that is uh, a second type of music now music he is saying that uh, moves into the inner world form of inner life so through music you can express your spirit you can express your inner feelings so um, the music uh, again is a romantic art and it has got an absolute idea and uh, uh, you can express yourself uh, in a great manner in a in, in a large scale uh, at, uh, when you uh, talk about music and the third one is poetry uh, he he's saying that uh, poetry basically is universal art of spirit in a time of ideas and feeling so uh, so you can express yourself uh, uh, in a uh, you can express your inner time of ideas and feeling and a universal art of spirit so you can express self uh, express yourself in a great way now these three types uh, of uh, uh, basically are included in romantic art and because of uh, these uh, uh, three unique uh, things romantic art is called uh, perfect art romantic art uh, romantic art has got an absolute idea so he is uh, uh, talking about talking in the he's talking in the favor of uh, romantic art so i can move uh, uh, towards the, the the last slide that is the uh, Hegel model of historical and philosophical uh, pro uh, progress. Uh, Hegel basically believes in uh, thesis. Now there are three things: thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. Now I am I am trying to make you understand. Uh, suppose uh, I am telling you one idea, and uh, uh, you basically. Uh, you, you say another and you you say that uh, sir, okay this idea is there but there is a, another idea so whatever i am saying it can be thesis whatever you are saying it can be antithesis it may be negation of my thesis it, it may be negation of my idea it may be uh, opposite of my idea now what happens we discuss there is a logical discussion discussion between us and 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 you see discussion among us and what happens there is logical discourse there is a logical discussion after the logical discussion we come to we agree on a point we compromise on a point that is called synthesis of uh, that thing and as as you know that he is he's talking about thesis initial stage antithesis negation of thesis synthesis negation of negation and return to the higher level of thesis again you 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 can say that these are the stages these are the stages uh, thesis antithesis and synthesis and when a synthesis is achieved so the idea has become absolute one the idea has become unique one the idea has become you see that modified one so synthesis tak pahunchne ke liye jo idea hai wo modified ho jata hai unique ho jata hai bahut acha ho jata hai aur uh, it is included in uh, self uh, you see that uh, uh, awareness and uh, uh, absolute truth uh, again he uh, just uh, explain it so this is a lengthy discussion as as we know we know that it it can't be expressed in a single lecture or it can can't be expressed uh, or it can't be discussed in a uh, 
a uh, single uh, you lecture you can say that or even there might be questions from your side in the next session uh, but it is it has got huge uh, you, you see that uh, uh, capacity to discuss certain things so uh, so so again he is trying to say a thesis now he is saying that this thesis is a symbolic art it it cannot express its message it has too little to express a symbolic art we we uh, symbolic art uh, we, we can say that uh, it cannot express its message it has too little to express so symbolic art he has included the symbolic art in thesis and then he's talking about antithesis classical art uh, uh, this uh, symbolic art uh, again you architecture and uh, classical art scriptures of, of Greek and in uh, symbolic art, we have got religious, uh, uh, you see that uh, uh, of uh, this pictures of uh, India and, and Egypt, religious. Uh, and uh, uh, classical art, this art can, uh, can adequately express its meaning, but its message is limited. So in symbolic art uh, cannot express its message, it is too little to express. But in classical art, basically it is antithesis and this art can adequately express it. So it can sufficiently express it, but its message is limited. Message is limited. Again, you see that the Hellenic art, art, art of uh, Greek. The third one is synthesis. There's a romantic art. Uh, you, you can say that he's trying to say that uh, symbolic art is in a stage and then there is there comes classical art and finally there comes the romantic art and that is called synthesis so he is saying that romantic art this art cannot be adequately expressed so you cannot sufficiently express this and uh, this is art why because it has too much to express so you you you, you can say that it has uh, it has got broader scope it has got larger school, scope and it is uh, very difficult and it is uh, large, uh, uh, therefore uh, it cannot be expressed. So it has got large scope, it has got broader scope. Uh, so he is talking about uh, in this uh, sense. Abhi aisa hai ke aapne offline hona hai aur uske baad dwara jo hai saadhe das baje aapne wapas join karna hai. तो हमारा वो नहीं अभी नहीं होगा ना क्योंकि वो दो पार्ट्स में जो है वो होंगे क्यों अभी कंटिन्यू हो जाएगा तो वो एक ही लेक्चर काउंट होगा तो अभी 15 मिनट का ब्रेक है उसके बाद जो है आपने ऑफलाइन होके दोबारा ऑनलाइन होना है साढ़े दस बजे